welcome back to the vlog, you guys. I am here with Emily White and Melissa Kelly of Dream Fuel. Tell everyone a little bit more about what Dream Fuel is all about. Absolutely. Dream Fuel builds tools for athletes and teams, and our first tool is a funding platform designed specifically for the sports market. So we look for competitive athletes, and honestly, that could be you know U8 soccer player up to an Olympic gold medalist like Anthony Irvin. For those of you who don't know, Kickstarter actually doesn't allow athletes to fundraise on the site. So that kind of is one of your motivations of starting the platform, right? Yeah, definitely. So my background's in the music industry and entertainment, where obviously crowdfunding is really common. It's a great way to connect with the audience and, and create a new revenue stream. And I started working with Olympic gold medalist Anthony Irvin in 2012. And the first thing he told me is that he wanted to compete for the US on the World Cup circuit, but he didn't know how he was going to pay for it. His plan was just to throw the expenses on his credit card and hope that he wins prize money. Um, as he was leaving in two weeks, there was no way I could guarantee a sponsorship deal coming together either way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suggested a Kickstarter campaign, actually. Um, I managed the musician who raised the most money ever for a musician on Kickstarter. Uh, her name's Amanda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her name is Amanda Palmer, and she raised over a million dollars on on the platform. So I reached out to the Kickstarter founders. I was super pumped about Anthony, and I said, you know, this is going to be a great campaign, and, and they rejected us because they don't work in sports. So we quickly did the campaign on our own, raised more than the goal, and. You know, I think whether someone's an athlete or not, they can understand being able to compete with the freedom of mind of not mm -hmm. having to win to pay off credit card debt. And he swam really well. He came back with 16 medals, nine of them gold, an American <laughs> Casual. <record. laughs> That's it? Yeah, and our, our campaign garnered so much attention that USA Swimming actually changed their policy and they now uh, partially fund the athletes to compete for the U.S. on the World Cup circuit. So, that, so that's really how Dream Fuel was born because um, we quickly realized that, that Anthony was certainly not alone. This happens to an incredible amount of athletes. They're they're typically paid, I think you said, around like $15,000 or so. It's gone up to uh, $17,100. Uh, that, that is the average U.S. Olympic hopeful salary. And then meanwhile, at the youth level, uh, Melissa and I actually went to the same high school, which is kind of crazy. Um, In the Midwest. Yes. Shout out to the, shout out shout to the Midwesterners. Out. Absolutely, Arrowhead High School. Um, and Arrowhead is a crazy sports powerhouse. And I was a state champion and All-American for the school. And because we manually fundraise going door to door with clipboards, which is how kids fundraise now, um, no one has ever reached out to me in my adult life as a successful executive asking if I would like to support the girls swim team or the sports teams or anything. And that's because they don't have my data or information. So that's exactly what Dream Fuel's first tool changes. Because anyone that's supporting your sports program is probably gonna wanna support them in the future. So by doing a campaign with Dream Fuel, we hand off all the data of the donors and we encourage you know, coaches and administrators yes, to use that season after season so they have a comprehensive database of their donors. How many athletes have you worked on to date with their campaign? I believe there's been over 100 on the platform. I know we've worked in over 30 sports and on six continents. I've really been amazed by the number of different types of athletes we have on Dream Fuel. The fact that this platform can support all of these different athletes who are either starting their career or Olympians, it's really incredible that it's so multi-purpose. You know, we helped a high school wrestler get to junior nationals once he qualified. Um, we're currently working with um, the Afghanistan Swimming Federation to fund creating wow. their first ever national women's swim team. Um, there is a gay soccer team in Mexico who uh, I, I needs funding to that. get to out games. So it's amazing. You know, I, I'm really floored every day, you know, when athletes are contacting us. It's not just kind of like the smaller sports like swimming and other Olympic sports. Like we've definitely had athletes come to us and say, I'm a football player. I just qualified for this elite camp, but it's in Virginia and I have no way of getting there, you know? so. Um, I think people forget, uh, even in kind of the bigger sports, everyone had to start somewhere and mm -hmm. sports are really expensive. Do you find that people are hesitant to donate to these campaigns? No, not at all. You know, one of my favorite examples was a swimmer named David Plummer, you know, who was 30 years old, married with two kids, and um, hadn't quite made the Olympics. He missed the Olympics by one spot in wow. 2012. And so, and he's from Minnesota, and everybody in his life, you know, knew how, how hard he was working, knew how much he was sacrificing. But it might be awkward to go up to someone at a barbecue and like hand them a check. Mm -hmm. um, so by working with Dream Fuel, his supporters, his audience got fun things in return, and really became a part of his journey. Something that's really cool about Dream Fuel's team, their whole team kind of works in different cities all a team of women working in different cities, which I think is so cool and you very rarely hear that. There are some really unique combinations of teams and how they work together, but I've never heard 
this one. So that's really interesting. How is that working on a team that's in all different cities? I mean, I'd love to hear from Melissa on that, yeah. but like, for me, I personally love it. Um, that is how my first company actually still functions. And you know, as we recruit team members to Dream Fuel, um, I never want them to be limited by location. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if we I find that. yeah a great recruit recruiting person um, that's based in Ohio or something. I, I live in New York. If they don't want to move to New York, like that's totally fine with me. It's been really incredible for me, also, especially being in my last semester here. It's given me the opportunity to pursue an internship with a company that I'm really excited about and still meet my academic obligations. And also, I felt really supported in my role. What advice would you say to other companies maybe trying to mimic this dynamic? Because so much of working at a company, but especially a startup, is accountability. So how do you ensure that when your team is kind of all over? It's really easy. We have one simple company rule, and that is that you have to respond to all messages within 24 business hours. And if you can't get to something, that is totally fine. You just need to tell us so another team member can take it over. And so when you have that you know, confidence in your communication, I mean, it's very rare that something would slip through the cracks. Anybody looking to fundraise, go to dreamfuel.me to check out more. And if anyone is raising for a sports event in Antarctica, um, that would give us all seven continents. Let's if, do it. I actually yes. just met somebody who ran, no way. who ran a marathon.